Angela. I'm a student ambassador at Macquarie um, and I'll be the host of the session this afternoon. So today we're very fortunate to have our academics, Dr. Kathleen Tate and Majulika Wanianaika, sorry, Manjula, um, here to talk through the Master of Education and Master of Special Education programs. So we'll be running a Q&A at the end of the session. Um, so throughout this this, I guess, um, presentation. If you have any questions, you can put it into the chat box at the bottom of the screen and we will answer them at the end of the session. So you can put them in as you go, but we'll answer them at the end. If you miss anything, not to worry, um, we'll be recording this session so um, you'll be able to view it later. Before we get into it, I'd like to start with an, an acknowledgement of country. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the country throughout Australia and their continuing connection to the land, waters and community. We pay our respect to them, to their culture and elders past, present and future. Great, now I'd like to um, pass it over to today's presenters. Thanks very much, Manjala. And uh, my name is uh, Professor Manjala Vaniganaitha. I'm the postgraduate course coordinator for the School of um, Education at Macquarie University. And I will be sharing this presentation with Dr. Kathleen Tate, who is the course director for special education uh, at, uh, at our School of Education as well. And in our presentation today, uh, we are going to uh, look specifically at four programs at the master's level. Uh, and um, we hope that you will um, get a lot out of uh, what we are uh, going to be sharing with you. But if you have any questions at all, please put them through the chat and we will come to it at the end of the presentation today. Okay. Angela, shall we move to the first slide, please? Sorry, just having some trouble here. There we go. <laughs> okay, well, obviously you have uh, been looking to do some studies uh, in postgraduate, at the postgraduate level. And, and the question for you is, I suppose, which university to study? And I hope that uh, Kathleen and I will be able to give you some very good reasons why choose Macquarie and why education at Macquarie. So let me begin by giving you at least three good reasons. First one is to refer to the international rankings of where education at Macquarie is. We are among the one of the top 100 institutions because there are lots and lots of universities, even in Australia, that offer education. And we are among the top 100. And of these, I could also say that our original motto talks about gladly teach, and we are still 100% committed to honor that commitment to teach and prepare the next generation of uh, teachers in Australia. Another good reason, another very good reason uh, is about the facilities that we have at Macquarie University and the embedded nature of our teaching that are connected to real life authentic experiences provided at two of our centers I'm just going to mention today. One is the Mia Mia Child and Family Study Center, which is renowned around the world for the pedagogy and curriculum that we offer children in the early years. And this is an integral part of our early childhood courses at Macquarie. And in, in a similar way, we also have a special education school on campus at Macquarie. And Kathleen will tell you about how we incorporate uh, that school into the teaching of our programs uh, in special education uh, at, 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 on our campus. So you don't have to go very far. You're actually on our beautiful campus and you have access to these kinds of special centers. The third thing that's uh, very important for us uh, at Macquarie is that we believe in producing people who are thinkers, thinkers who are going on to make good teachers and good teachers who are going to be effective leaders. 
And this is so, so necessary in the context of a rapidly changing and evolving social environment. And COVID-19 is giving you that full impact of what is rapid change. And we are certainly preparing our graduates to address those changes, be responsive to that, but also be proactive in going for innovation uh, in, by using evidence-based uh, solutions um, in, in our teaching. So critical thinking is part of the core components of study that we will help you to develop at, at Macquarie through education. In the next slide, Majela, um, working, um, hope you can move to the next slide now, please. Um, I'm going to also talk a little bit more generally about uh, the key features of all of our programs at the postgraduate level. Number one is the fact that we are very flexible in the way that we cater to the needs of our diverse community of learners. So if you want to study on campus, you can do that, provided of course, you know, COVID uh, withdraws to the background and we don't ever see it come back. Um, otherwise, we can actually tailor make our programs online to suit uh, the, the, your personal circumstances and what it is that you want to achieve. We try to tailor make and take into account uh, the needs as well as your uh, strengths and interest in pursuing the postgraduate studies with us at Macquarie. Number two is the fact that we have some of the best teachers who are also active researchers De delivering the courses that you will be studying at Macquarie with us. Because they are active researchers, you are also going to get cutting edge knowledge and skills from the experts directly. So this is a good thing as well. You don't have to go elsewhere. It's there right on tap for you. And we also pride in ourselves by saying to, to our prospective applicants that at Macquarie, it is not just about the academics. It is also about the experience that you have on campus, or if you also want, if you're interested in going abroad, we have lots of international agreements which allow you to travel to other parts of the world as a part of your study program. So that's a wonderful, amazing experience as well. And you can talk to other students and uh, find out from them how much they have valued those experiences. The next slide, please. We have lots of different postgraduate programs. And in today's presentation, as I said at the beginning, um, Kathleen and I are only going to focus on four specifically. And this does not include the initial teacher education courses that are on this particular slide. But I wanted to give you uh, some insights about the fact that we do have three masters of teaching programs. And this is for people who want to become teachers. These are fully accredited, approved, government approved teacher education qualifications. And they are between one and a half to two years full time equivalent that you can complete these degrees. And we do have people wanting to do these. These are some of our very um, popular programs. But the reason that uh, we're not going to talk about these today is the fact that um, you can't, you have, we only have one intake every year into the Master of Teaching programs, and that's in the beginning of the year, in first semester. So if you're interested in studying um, in the second semester, then we will talk, offer you the four programs that we elaborate on. But we are very happy to take uh, questions about the, the initial teacher education courses as well. But keeping in mind, it's for a start in 2021. Thanks, Majella. Next one, please. So these are the two courses, Master of Education and the Master of Early Childhood that I will elaborate on. And Majella, if you go to the next slide, we will talk more, uh, Kathleen will talk about the Master of Special Education and the Masters in Disability Studies. Next slide, because I'm skipping through this because we are going to talk in detail now about um, the, the but specific programs. The Master of Education and the Master of Early Childhood are a little bit similar in, in terms of the structure. So that's why I have got them on the one slide here. So the minimum duration of the course is at least one year. 
or it could be one and a half years, depending on what you have done previously in your undergraduate programs. And you can do the programs on campus uh, or fully online as well. So it depends, you know, what, uh, what is your learning style, if you prefer to study online or whether you'd like to come on campus. Unfortunately, of course, you know, next semester, we are still going to be providing classes only on an online basis. Uh, until the COVID-19 uh, restrictions are lifted. That's, that's going to have to be the way it is. Um, and we have classes during the week and as well as on the weekend and sometimes also in, in the evenings. Because we have a diversity of students coming from very different backgrounds, um, we try to give everybody at least you know, a few units that play directly into their circumstances and other times you know you can't uh, you will have to um, to to see what's available uh, on the weekend uh, or not during the week so most of our postgraduates tend to be working as teachers uh, full-time and so they do prefer the evening study or the weekend study so we can look at once you have selected and um, you know which program you want to do we can actually talk to you about the units and how they're delivered. So most of the postgraduate students also tend to study part-time because as I said, because of work commitments, um, but you can also do full-time study. And I'll elaborate a little bit more about what full-time means. So we can do both the Master of Education and the Master of Early Childhood uh, in, at the beginning of the year or at the, um, the, the middle of the year. And classes usually commence for first semester in February and in second semester at the end of July. Thanks, Manchela. Next one, please. This is an endorsement from one of our former uh, graduates who completed her Master of Education uh, at Macquarie University. And you can see that um, in her own words, uh, she, she selected to study uh, education because, to quote her, I was keen to ensure my teaching strategies remained current and engaged my students this is she's talking about her uh, children in the classroom, while continually developing my own professional practice and overall understanding of education. This program at Macquarie University offered me that opportunity. Working with lecturers who have been amazingly open, supportive, consultative, and knowledgeable about the issues facing our field was also a highlight. Thank you, Kate. So this uh, I hope will be your experience also at Macquarie University and we are always open to your suggestions, your ideas and uh, respond to, uh, to, to your needs and interests as best as we can uh, throughout your period at Macquarie University. Thanks Magella. Next one please. So in the Master of Education now, um, I just want to uh, focus specifically about this degree. We offer specializations and here we are. Um, this is the current specializations that we have on, uh, on, on in the handbook for 2020. And from every year we change these. Uh, and um, we are currently in the process of deciding which uh, specializations uh, will be uh, available uh, in uh, in 2021, uh, and that information should be coming sh shortly. So for now, we uh, let me give you a brief description about the, the four specialisations that are on this slide. Applied studies in education is a general um, uh, approach to looking at um, uh, curriculum or pedagogy that you would want to focus on and you don't have a particular interest in, say for example, bilingual education. And so there's a number of units that you can do, pick and choose which ones you want to, uh, to study, and it could be an eclectic mix uh, of, of units. So these are people who haven't um, uh, yet decided uh, which, which particular area, like leadership or bilingualism or uh, special ed as, a, as an area that they really want to do. On the other hand, if you are interested in, in bilingualism, there is a specialization. And when we talk about specialization, T 
typically we would define at least minimum of two units which are prescribed or mandated, you must do those. Sometimes there are actually four units, all four units uh, are specified for you. So we look at the mix to allow you to go deeper into that area. And in the case of bilingual education, we have two colleagues who are experts uh, in looking at uh, uh, culture and language in the context of teaching and uh, they will be the ones uh, who, who will, uh, because they are experts in their field, I mean, that's the other important thing I want to, to emphasize. So every specialization is led by an expert in the field. So I, I, I teach in uh, my area of specialization is leadership, and I teach in the leadership in school education specialization. And uh, it is perhaps one of the uh, longest running um, uh, specializations uh, in, in the Master of Education. Uh, I've been at Macquarie now for 15 years and this has been my area of specialization for that, that all that time and Macquarie is known for for this area because of the fact that we've had lots of people who are um, experts uh, in looking at educational leadership. Um, special education studies uh, is, a, is a new um, specialization that we have started this year and it is proving to be very, very popular uh, in, 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 our, uh, uh, in the Master of Education uh, this year. So Kathleen can talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and um, it, again, it's based on four units that uh, take you into uh, to, to the specific focus of uh, what it means uh, to respond to uh, children with uh, special needs in our, in our schools. Thank you, Mitchell. I will move to the next one. In the Master of Early Childhood, uh, there are only two specializations. And uh, the first one focuses on curriculum pedagogy. And uh, we have a number of units uh, and uh, again, very skilled teachers who are dedicated to a language and literacy, for example, or another thing, another area of the curriculum that we are famous for um, is infant uh, and toddler uh, pedagogy. Um, and so you, you will get to see some units which are probably, I would say, quite unique to Macquarie because of the experts in our sector uh, working as researchers and teachers uh, in, in, in these programs. Leadership in early childhood education. This is one of my pet areas, and um, we 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 are very pleased also to see that uh, students who complete these specialisations they're moving on to do PhDs also because we have the supervision, uh, the the academics to be able to give you uh, to supervise you in your studies beyond the master of early childhood as well. Thanks, Menchela. We'll move on. So again, combining the Master of Education and the Master of Early Childhood, what can you do with one of these degrees uh, in terms of your career planning and uh, your future employment? Lots of opportunities. Um, first of all, I would just say in a general sense that uh, teacher, teacher graduates and Macquarie teacher graduates are very welcomed by employers um, in general. And specifically, if you're not uh, be, uh, going to be you know, pursuing a career in an educational context, then there are other opportunities for you to do uh, in relation to adult education uh, or as a training consultant and even big corporations like um, uh, who, who, who are involved in uh, working with the children and families or providing um, policies to support working families with children, um, they want to know whether they can actually employ teach, uh, graduates with an education qualification who understands family context, understands what it means to support um, uh, employees uh, with, uh, with young children. So you can become a policy uh, maker uh, not only within a government context, but also in, in a corporate context, or a researcher uh, working for large uh, con uh, agencies who, um, 
who do research, uh, market research. So lots of different opportunities uh, come from having a Master of Education or a Master of Early Childhood. And I also want to mention big organizations or agencies who do critical work like the Human Rights uh, Commission, they also employ uh, graduates uh, who, with an education degree of, of this kind. So plenty of opportunities and we will also, because we have connections in the sector with government, non-government organizations, we can also give you advice on where you could take, uh, you know, how, how you can make better use of your degrees from Macquarie. Thank you, Majella. We could move to the next one. Now this is um, a, a, a framework that we in, drive our teaching to produce thinking teachers uh, with, with a lot of care and thought and has gone into become, developing a cohesive platform to guide our programs. So in this case, uh, we, we refer to this as the five R's framework, which are built around the concepts of resilience, reflexivity, responsiveness, readiness, and research engaged. What does that mean? Resilience is about being what I call staying power. Staying power, being able to persist and persevere and deal with uh, challenges that come your way. And this is in built into our courses. And in the same way, reflexivity is, is about looking within yourself, being impartial and objective means that you're able to be, be aware of your own biases, uh, your own attitudes in responding to, um, to the work that you do uh, in, with, with other people. And this is, this is a skill that is going to be of uh, real importance in a context that you know, we are dealing with, uh, which, which is um, rapidly changing. And for education, change is just part and parcel of everyday practice. So being responsive to that change and being ready to respond, being agile and being flexible is an essential part of the, the courses that we teach. And the, not only the way we teach, but it is also about the content and the knowledge and the skills that come in how do you become more reflexive? How do you become more responsive? And how, do you, how are you going to be prepared to support others? And this might be colleagues, this, this might be students or learners in your classrooms, uh, or, or your uh, uh, advising management about how do we manage um, the, the rapidly changing uh, in involve, evolving social circumstances that we all have to deal with. To do that, we also pride in ourselves that um, we, develop our courses with a commitment to research informed practice. This means that we are not only doing the research, but we're also keeping abreast of research that's happening out there in the world. Because of our networks, because of our uh, connections with local people, as well as uh, connections um, internationally. And you can look at that by going and having a look at the Macquarie um, uh, School of Education's uh, academics and their research profiles. And it'll come up with a map uh, and show you how well connected um, the colleagues that I work with are. And we take pride in embedding that research into the teaching that we do. Thanks, Magella. Next one, please. Now, we often get asked about um, what is the, the, the workload and the study commitment that postgraduates have to commit to when they start a master's degree. And the beautiful image that is uh, appearing in this slide is our library, our beautiful, magnificent library. And it's a wonderful place to study. And I will also share a little secret with you because when the library was built, it actually had a special place just for the postgraduate. So it's, it's, it's a place that you can go and Lots of students who do go to this area know that that space is just for postgraduates. It's not for undergraduates because undergraduates, um, there are lots and lots of them and they can, even though it's a library, it's, it's, it's not one of those libraries which are very, very quiet. There are places to be quiet. You can um, have um, uh, special rooms and book those rooms uh, for a group of people to study. 
but the lounge for the postgraduate area is really special. Uh, you just have to go and see it and then you'll know what I mean. So uh, it's a place that will help you to manage your workload, I would hope, um, and a full-time load uh, for, for a postgraduate degree uh, comprises of four units of study every semester. You don't have to do that and because as I said at the beginning, many of our postgraduates are studying part-time, they tend to take one or two units and that's absolutely fine. And some people start with just one unit just to get a taste of it and a single unit is equal to 10 credit points and the total workload uh, for one, one uh, unit is about roughly about 150 hours and that's spread throughout the semester. And in our units, we will actually tell you what sort of, um, how you can spread those 150 hours of work for the semester. And it's usually good to keep an eye uh, to see whether you, if you're studying one unit that you have actually uh, done at a minimum of 10 hours of work per unit uh, with every unit. And in some weeks, you may not actually need to spend 10 hours. In some weeks, you can actually just do the lecture recording and do the readings that's allocated. And that might actually be about two or three hours. And other weeks, you might have to spend more time um, because you know, you're preparing an assignment that you're not familiar with or however you have the, the course is constructed. So we, we do talk to students with every unit how to organize your time. And then it's up to you to then, you know, make the commitment to do that. So this is where our, my presentation now go, is going to finish. Uh, and Magella, the next one slide would be the, uh, the handover slide. Uh, and I'm going to hand you over now to Dr. Tate to talk about the Master of Special Education and the Master of Disability Studies. Thanks, Kathleen. Great. Thanks everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to speak to you about both of these postgraduate courses. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the Master of Special Education and also a couple of other um, courses, the Graduate Diploma and also Graduate Certificates, um, which are all combined together and also uh, a separate postgraduate course, the Master of Disability Studies. The Master of Disability Studies is um, administered by staff at Renwick College, which is part of the Royal Institute of Deaf, Blind Children. Um, yes, next slide, thanks. Thanks very much, Mangella. Okay, so what is special education? Well, it's a practice of educating students with special education needs in a way that addresses their individual needs. And some of the most common special education needs that children are diagnosed with are learning and developmental disabilities, communication disorders, emotional and behaviour disorders, and physical and sensory disabilities. That's not always the case that children are diagnosed, and it may be a case that children might be presenting with characteristics where they might be considered to be at risk of having a de or, or um, developing a developmental disability. And so these are the sorts of things that we will be teaching you to be aware of. Um, within, within the postgraduate course. So this is a suite of courses that comprises of four to 12 units and as such offers an introduction to special education for teachers. Um, we also uh, have a lot of people from allied health professions who engage in this um, program of study and also social welfare providers who, because this particular course doesn't require a formal initial teacher education qualifications. So people can come with a range of different undergraduate degrees and be considered for entry into this course. We might have some people who will be working in the juvenile detention area, for example. Um, so they don't have an, an initial teacher education qualification, but we'll look at what their undergraduate degree has and we will see whether um, that will enable them to be uh, um, enrolled in this advanced knowledge course in special education. So in addition to the, um, the units that you'll be learning from, you'll also have direct access to the on-campus um, USEC school, which is a special school that's on campus because there are aspects of professional experience in special education that are um, uh, um, in, incorporated into the program. So in this way, you'll have the opportunity of being mentored by and supervised at your crack 
by advanced skills, special education teachers and therapists who are fully employed on campus at the NISAC school. Next slide, please. So teachers and education professionals who are enrolled in these postgraduate courses in special education can learn about evidence-based practices to support individuals with special needs or those who are at risk, as I mentioned before, of perhaps developing a special need. Um, so this course will allow you to work with um, children and, well, the whole age spectrum, really. So we, you may be wanting to work with infants or preschoolers, primary school or elementary school age, secondary school, or even adults with disabilities. Um, so you may be working at a, a day centre where you're supporting adults with disabilities. So this course will allow you um, to learn about uh, special education needs, but a lot of the assignments focus on work-based situations. So you can use wherever you're working, the individuals you're working with, um, to gather data and to write up your assignments. So it's really very individually targeted in that way um, because you can choose which area you would like to um, gather data in and whether that's working with an infant or working with an adult, that's entirely up to you. Um, so the courses focus on current issues and topics in the field of special education and will allow you the, whoop, back we go, and will allow you the opportunity to build on existing skills and knowledge in education. So it's an advanced knowledge um, specification. Uh, the units are designed for educational professionals who want to learn skills to effectively support students with a range of disabilities, so indicated before. Um, and if you've got a background in education or human services and you're interested in learning more about working with children, youth and adults with special education needs, any of the courses that I'm about to explain to you are going to be ideal for you. So while these courses don't lead to a teaching qualification in special education, in Australia, you need to be, um, have an initial teacher education qualification to be able to be registered for, registered for a teacher. We often have a lot of people, social workers, therapists, um, so speech pathologists, occupational therapists, psychologists, etc., who are working in the special education field who don't want to be uh, registered as a teacher, but who do want the advanced knowledge in special education. So we do have a range of people um, with, from different backgrounds who are, will be studying with you in this suite of units. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to show you the, the plan for the courses or the course outline. And you can see there on the left hand side, we've got the course plan for the Master of Special Education. Now we only offer this part time and that's because our students um, have shown in the last five years, we did offer it um, full time. We found that we just weren't getting anyone enrolling full time because most of the people who enrol in these courses are either working full time, working part time, or they might have care responsibilities, parents with young children at home, or perhaps um, you've got a, a, an elderly parent uh, that you're caring for. So in most cases, uh, our students um, were, were preferring to study part time. And there are 12 units, so there's no choices. It's a set of 12 units. And you can see that there's six that units offered in first semester and six units offered in second semester. But if you have a look over on the right hand side, I've got the course plan there for a graduate certificate in learning difficulties. We have a graduate certificate in positive behaviour support and a graduate certificate in learning difficulty support. And there are only four units that you need to complete um, to be able to qualify and graduate with a graduate certificate. And because many of our students are mature age students, um, frequently a little bit nervous about going back into, into study, not so much because of the, the level of difficulty, but because the workload and how do you, you know, marry up what you're doing with your other life events. Um, so often people will just want to put their toe in the water and start off with the graduate certificate. Um, and then they complete that one and then uh, if they're feeling confident, many of them do, um, they will upgrade to either a graduate diploma, which is eight units, or the Master of Special Education, which is 12 units. And all of the units are the same. So regardless of whether you started off with a graduate certificate, you complete those four units, or you can start off with a graduate diploma in special education and you complete those eight units, you get credit for them all. So you'll get credit for the graduate certificate and then you might want to go into the Master of Special Education and you get credit for all of those units. You don't have to do them again. 
um, and then you just complete the other eight units um, for the Master of, of uh, Special Education. So that's something to consider. If you just want to, you know, put your toe in the water, um, you could start off with a graduate certificate and then upgrade to, um, at any time you can upgrade, you don't have to finish um, that particular set of, set of units um, because they're all part of the suite, they're all nested into the Master of Special Education. Next unit, please. Next slide, please. So just in terms of course information for the Master of Special Education, um, it's fully online. So, so um, there's a, I can hear a sigh of relief from everyone who's watching. Uh, so you don't need to come on campus at all for, um, for the, the teaching semester. Um, it's fully online, so all of your, your readings are available online. You don't have to come to our beautiful library, but it's, it's there if you want to. Um, and it does mean that you don't have to even be in Sydney to study. So we have students in Perth, in Darwin, in, in Townsville, in Hobart. Um, so there's students coming from, from all areas um, of Australia and um, studying online. So you don't have to be in Sydney. Um, so it's part-time only, as I mentioned, but for the graduate certificates and the graduate diploma, it is possible to complete those, those two um, uh, courses full-time if you'd like to, but certainly we offer part-time or full-time for those, but only part-time for the Master of Special Education. Um, we commence in both February and July, so we have two intakes, um, so twice a year. The entry requirement is some undergraduate degree in a related area. So it might be education, but it could be psychology, it could be a speech pathology degree or an occupational therapy degree. Um, so we have, um, you know, we have a, a range of, of opportunities for people to supply their information and then it's sent to um, various academics. We have a look at what your, your background is. Um, and if we think that you're going to be able to take on the advanced knowledge, skills, special education, then of course we, we uh, welcome you with open arms into the Master of Special Ed or the Graduate Certificate or the Graduate Diploma. So as I said before, you'll get course credit if you wanted to start off with a Graduate Certificate or Graduate Diploma. Um, any of the units that you finish um, successfully in those courses, you'll get course credit for the Master of Special Education. So that's just for the Master of Special Education. The Master of Disability Studies is run by a different group. Next slide, please. Um, so, as Mangela was saying, there's not only the, the units um, and looking at content that relates to special education um, assessment, intervention, um, monitoring, etc., um, and information about current events that are happening within the domain of special education. There's also a research component. So, at the end of your course of study, um, you'll be engaging in a capstone unit and that's an individual research project, a work-based project. So you can utilise um, children or adults that you're working with in your place of work. Um, or you can, you can negotiate with the principal for the new sex special school on campus to come on campus and work with one of the children there for your capstone unit. So we have a whole range of um, support options there for you. Um, NISA requires accredited teachers to complete 100 hours of professional development over five years to maintain their registration in New South Wales and postgraduate study can meet these requirements. So it's such something to think about. Um, and for more information, I'd write to your local education department because I'm not sure what the requirements are for other states, um, but certainly that's something to consider. You can, can utilise your postgraduate study um, as your uh, professional development. Um, you can complete your professional experience in a range of settings. So if you don't live in Sydney, um, obviously we're not going to make you fly to Sydney to complete your crack at the MUSAC school. Um, so we will negotiate with you to find a local special school that you can complete your, um, your, your crack at. And there's 10 days professional experience for the masters and graduate diploma courses and five days of professional experience for the graduate certificate courses. And those are um, assessment hurdles. So you don't actually get graded for those, it's a pass fail and all of our students of course are brilliant and so they will, they will pass. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a requirement for the, the course, for all of the special education courses. So it's very flexible ob um, options for undertaking these courses, so it makes it really suitable for part-time study. Um, so if you want to be working during the week and you can only study on the weekend, that's fine and dandy. 
um, or if you've got a, you know, you're a parent and you've got um, young children that you need to care for and get them to and from school during um, during the week, and you can't study on the weekend, but you can study when they're away at playgroup or or at school. Um, you've got all those those options, which is nice for um, profession, practicing professionals or students with full time care responsibilities. So very suitable for part time study because it's online. Um, you don't have to come to campus. You don't have to come to a, a set. Um, lecture. All of the lectures are pre-recorded. Um, you'll have on the online um, site, you'll not only have recorded lectures, but you'll have um, activities and supplementary readings, other little short snippet videos um, that might focus on a specific aspect of the topic that you'll be studying, um, quizzes, uh, you've got opportunities to engage with your peers and with your academic, um, either via Zoom or by dialogue. Um, so we have blogs and whatnot, so all sorts of fun things are on the uh, on the website for you to engage with the materials. Um, so your study isn't in an advanced field, so it's not an initial teacher education area, it's definitely advanced knowledge um, and you will benefit from our research and risk teaching and learning environment and you'll have access to ongoing professional learning because at our School of Education we have an academy, an academy for continuing professional development in education and they offer part-time and micro-credentialing courses uh, which specialise in cutting-edge professional development. So that's another thing uh, to consider and the reason why you should come to Macquarie University. Good choice. Next slide, please. So in terms of um, you know, what do you do after you've got a Master of Special Education, well, there's a range of career opportunities. Um, there is, of course, uh, all the different versions of, of teaching, with whether you're teaching in daycare or uh, in an, ad, um, an activity day centre, or you might be working in a disability service um, or in a, a special education uh, school, or you might be working in a unit. Um, but there's also allied health professional agencies. You might be a, um, want to work as a mental health service provider, a childcare provider, working with children with special education needs. Um, a special education consultant um, and so there's a range of employers there's obviously the education department but childcare mental health services lots and lots of government agencies and as I mentioned before juvenile detention centers so these are kind of one of the kind of five major employers that my students have engaged with after they've completed their master special education um, next slide please So the Master of Disability Studies is separate to the Master of Special Education. Um, and this is a, a course that's designed for a range of candidates, including qualified teachers and a range of professionals seeking to complete studies in disability, but specifically in hearing loss and vision loss. So when you look at the Master of Disability Studies, it's really focusing and specialising in those two sensory areas, hearing loss and vision impairment. So you will complete a Master of Disability specialising in one of those fields. So either the Master of Disabilities and specialising in vision impairment, or you'll complete a Master of Disability Studies and specialise in deaf or hard of hearing. Or there is a Master of Disabilities called the Sensory Disability Specialisation, which will offer allied health and other professionals advanced knowledge in both hearing and vision within contemporary studies in disability. 